Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tuts, and today I'm going to start our theming course for Magento. And we're going to get into everything from the very basics to the advanced stuff. We're going to be doing uh, not only custom layouts, we're going to be doing custom CSS, we're going to be doing custom JavaScript, jQuery stuff, um, pretty much anything you'd want to know about theming a site with Magento. So the first thing we have to do is take it to the very basics. And the very basics is really the model that Magento follows for websites and stores. So basically, a website is uh, one or more store of the same uh, customer information, the same order information, the same shopping cart. You see here we have website name, main website, uh, main website, and main website. Okay, the next level for that is the store. The store is a collection of store views, and it can be set up in all sorts of ways. Uh, basically, the store is a container um, to group all your related things, right? So it's just like a store in a strip mall or something. The store is going to have all the related products or all the products of that, that particular store. Okay, but let's say you run multiple different stores. You don't have to have different backends to run all those stores. You can just create a new website or a new store um, depending on what your level of flexibility needed is. And the last is a store view. And a store view is actually, uh, it's going to be the same, the same products, the same everything, except for uh, it's just different. So these are mostly used for different languages. We have an English, uh, French, and German store here. They're all part of the main store store and the main website website. And you don't have to have more than one of these. In fact, I'm sure most cases will really just be one website, one store, uh, one store view. So really, uh, since this is, uh, you know, we're just going to keep this real basic, I'm actually going to go ahead and delete these other ones out of here, just so we don't have to worry about them. So let me delete the store view. These are just the ones that uh, I'm going to click no. I don't need a backup because we're not doing anything with the German store. Typically, if I had done something with any of these stores, yeah, I would I'd probably have taken a backup long before I went to this stage. But I'm going to delete this one as well. These are just the ones that Magento creates itself. Oh, I selected backup. Oh, let's see if I can get this before it goes through. OK, so it looks like now we just have our main website our main store, and it's in English. So let's imagine we ran a tea store. Uh, the website name would be the tea website, all right? The store name would be, you know, so-and-so's teas. And the store view would also be so-and-so's teas, but it's going to be the, you know, the English or whatever. So um, in an instance, we had two different tea stores, one for the US and one for China, store name US, tea store, China, tea store, or let's say we had a tea store and we had a coffee store, both owned by the same companies. Uh, it's owned by the same company, so you'd have the main website. You could have tea store, English. Main website, coffee store, English. And they're going to look like different stores, different front ends, okay? So this is how Magento likes to break this up. You can run all sorts of multiple websites or stores off of one Magento installation if that's something you need to be able to do. But let's say, for instance, you had to two totally different companies running two totally different stores, but you wanted to keep it on one Magento backend. You could make a second website and then have a new store name and a new store view name. So the next piece to this is design packages. So let's actually go to um, system and let's go to configuration and then in here we're gonna go to design and you can see some things here so design package and themes so what what you can do is you can create themes to give your site the exact look it's going to have and a design package is a group of related themes so in each design package, you're going to need a default theme. So let's say your design package is the design of your store. The first theme inside of your design package needs to be default theme. And then you can have other variants of that. Let's say you have a holiday variant of your default theme. That way you can just override certain things of your default theme uh, with the holiday elements that you need. 
But for the most part, if you just have a site, a theme on that site, what you need is just a design package and a theme, a default theme. So the themes in Magento are broken down into two totally different components. Uh, in fact, we can see here, this is the, the structure here. If you go under skin and front end, uh, we have what's our skin theme. And this is, includes our CSS, our images, our JavaScript, any of that stuff. The stuff that's going to change uh, the visual output, the styles of the site, and how it's looking. Um, also, if you go back to the main root structure of your document, you can go up to app, and then an app slash design, uh, and then we can go to front end. You'll also see the same themes. However, inside what a theme does is it controls the layout of your pages, um, the template of your pages, that kind of stuff. So if you need to move a block around or if you want to change how products are being output, uh, these are going to be in these files here. However, if you're going to want to change the background, of, background color of your site, it's going to be in the skin part of your site. So a default theme is going to have to contain all of the uh, the layout, the required layouts and skins required to render your store, right? Uh, but because of Magento uses this fallback model, if it doesn't find one of those files in your theme, it's going to go to the base default theme. And this is going to work for the skin and the uh, layout part of your, the, the skin and the app design part of your uh, store here. So if you don't have those files, it's going to go to the base theme and grab those files. So this is a good thing if you're trying to do a seasonal design, because if you uh, you know want to just override some parts, it's going to fall back to your default theme. And then you don't have to you know duplicate all those files, and you can only you you would only have the files you need to change in your theme, and then it's going to go to the base default theme and pull the rest of the theme files from there. So really you only have to edit what you need to have to edit, you know? You on, you're only editing uh, what you have to and the rest can just stay as a default theme. Okay, so this is a little insight into the basics of what we're going to be doing. In the next couple lessons I'm going to go over some more block stuff um, and I'm going to go over some layout stuff and we're going to have to get into some XML, which is a little bit weird. I think uh, coming from other content management systems, Magento likes to do things a little differently than you might expect. But uh, it's, re you know, it's really powerful if you take the time to learn exactly what's going on here. Okay, as always, this is Scott with Level Up Tuts. If you have any questions, please leave a comment in the video. Hit us up at Level Up Tuts. Let us know what you're thinking. Um, there's going to be a lot more tutorials coming in the near future for Magento theming. Thanks.